Hi guys, hope you're doing well. As you can see from the thumbnail, um, I've had a bit of an incident with my uh, F-18 here, which is one of my favourite planes. It, it flies absolutely brilliant. Um, what's happened, unbeknown to me, I've had some fake servos in, and uh, one of them's failed on me in a catastrophic way. So we'll, we'll show that in the video. But before we get on to that, what I thought I'd do is just show you some of the build pictures and then we've got the maiden flight as well. And the maiden flight went really well. Um, and m m my cameraman uh, adds a little bit of uh, humour to the video as well. I think, I think you'll enjoy that side of it. And then what we'll do is I've actually found a fix for these uh, servos. That, so you'll never have this problem again. And it's using this tool here. So when we get on to looking at the actual servos, we'll, we'll fix these. these fake MG90S servos. Um, so what we'll do is I'll give you a few recommendations of how you can hopefully avoid this problem. I mean, you're never gonna avoid it completely. I mean, even when you buy um, top-notch servos, you can always have a failure, but um, the problem with these servos are so popular um, that they, they do get counterfeited you know, by the Chinese resellers. And, you know, and unbeknown to me, I've purchased some counterfeit ones so uh, but I have found a way how you can identify them now which I should, probably should have done in the first place but you know lesson learned so as you can see the repairs underway and uh, she's not looking too bad again but as you'll see from the video the the uh, crash was caught quite, quite severe on the front end so uh, so without further ado what we'll do is we'll go on and look at the the build pictures and then the main flight and then we'll get on to looking at the the fix for the fake servos so as you can see from the pictures guys it's made of six mil depron and i've got the carbon rods going across the uh, wing span to give some reinforcement and it's not one of the easiest builds but it is in the advanced section of frc families but it did go together okay and uh, as you can see it's turned out quite well and i was quite pleased with the finish So here we go for the maiden flight, guys. This is about a month ago, uh, around about the 11th of April. And, uh, and just from the sides of the screen, you can see a little bit of um, black coming in. That's the, uh, the windsock on the GoPro. Um, it, it didn't fit particularly well. Uh, now I'd forgotten to bring my adapter to put the camera on my hat. So uh, Martin kindly said he would <laughs> film it for me. He's, he's not done a lot of this before, but so he's uh, he, he was a little bit worried, but you see he did all right. <laughs> oh, has he got it? I don't know if I've got it. So she was away, a little bit twitchy to start with, but once I got it dialed in, she was... Uh, she, she flew quite well and uh, and quite quick as well. And it it's running um, a Grap RC twenty seven hundred kV motor with a, a six by three prop. Um, on some later flights, I changed it to a six by four when it went even better. So so as you can see, it's uh, it flies really well. I can't even see it in this screen. I'm just hoping I've got it. I can't even see it in the yeah. screen, I'm just hoping I've got it. Yeah. Martin getting a little bit excited on the camera, but he, he, he's done quite a good job actually, so, um, you know, thanks to Martin for doing that. I'm trying to do the low pass here to see if we can get a better shot. It was a little bit on the cold side this day, it was <laughs> April in the UK, which, you know, the weather's been a bit up and down. You know, one day we get nice weather, the next way, day it throws it down. <laughs> it was quite windy, so the wind sock did help to keep a little bit of the wind off. So I was really pleased with it, so... Yeah, just coming yeah. In. so we're coming in for a landing. 
Okay, yeah. Which way are we coming in? It wasn't my yeah, best landing, but it, uh, it survived no problem. Sure. And I'm on my new NX6 transmitter as well. So, uh, so a little bit of a dump, but uh, it, it survived okay. So guys, this is where it all ended in tears. Um, I, I had flown the uh, F-18 a couple more times since the maiden and it, it flew really well. So I was really surprised when you see what happened. So Pete did a great launch. Everything going okay, turned his back and bang, oh. Oh. straight in. Oh dear, that's a bit of a mess. Of a mess. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing because it's uh, more of a nervous laugh, I think. But um, as you can see there, that airline is down. Oh, and initially I did think it was, was me on the controls, but to go in that violently, it wasn't. So when I got back from the flying field, guys, I was, you know, I was a little bit disappointed because, you know, this turned out really well, and it was my first real attempt at using a, a vinyl cutter um, to do the decals, and they came out, and as you can see, they've, they've come out quite well. The decals, a bit of hot glue on there. But, um, yeah, I was quite pleased with the decals, and obviously it's it's ruined some at the front. So the the repair's gone um, quite well. Um, you know the beauty of these um, planes from FC Foamies is that the you've got the plan so you can just recut the parts out so I haven't cut all the parts back out uh, I've just cut portions of it out so uh, and it's it's gone back reasonably well uh, so there's still quite a bit more to do a lot of filling and sanding to do to get it looking how it was but um, and what I've also done I've also removed the servos as well so I don't know when you can Let's see if you can see. So the servos have all come out now. So they're they're all out now. Um, and that's been one of the things I've decided not to do anymore. I'm not going to glue the servos directly in because getting them out afterwards can be a bit of a pain and, and there is a little bit of damage where I've taken them out which won't be too bad to fix but what I've decided to do now is use these little um, uh, servo holders so these can be glued into the um, the actual foam wing and then the servos will just screw in them so I found these on Thingiverse I'll, I'll put a link in the description and I've printed um, I've printed loads of them out. I've got nine there and I've got an, another batch as well. So the, the, they're still on the brim there. So I thought I'd leave them on that just to so I know where they are. And I have tried them. Um, and what I'm going to be using now, when, when I got back home um, and did some investigation, the airline that was down, as you can see from the video, I pulled that server out, checked it, and it was completely dead. You know, um, and then... Uh, I did look at the video to examine how it f it fell on the crash to see whether it, it was actually the crash that caused the airline to move, and it and it hadn't, it didn't fall at all on that wing, and the way it went so violently, um, it was obvious something happened. I mean, I've I've flown this about three or four times, and it's flown absolutely brilliant every time. So, for it to do that on the launch was very very unusual, and. Uh, Initially, I thought, well, was it me? But afterwards, looking back at the video, it wasn't me at all. So uh, it's these servos. And now I'll put some pictures up, but you can see, you can see, by the way, the stickers on. And then if you actually go onto the Tower Pro website, and I'll put a link in the description, what they say is that if it's a genuine Tower Pro uh, MG90S servo or any Tower Pro servo, there will be actually a, a watermark logo on the picture. So if that's been taken off, then the chances are that they're counterfeit servos. And on um, the Emacs uh, servos, 
when you get the box, there's actually a, a QR code on the box itself. So that, that tells you. So afterwards I thought, well, where can I get some good servos from? I had a look round and I'd, I've had Emacs servos before and I've never had any problems with Emacs servos. Um, so I looked around and uh, there's a company in the UK called 3D uh, XR and they're mainly into drones and FPV stuff. And uh, you might have seen him on uh, Painless 360's um, YouTube channel. Uh, Lee there does quite a lot of work with him. He goes up there every so often to see what they're doing. And, uh, and he's got a, a good reputation and, and I'm sure he wouldn't stock anything that was below standard. So I actually did contact him and asked him about their servos, their Emacs servos, were they genuine and were they uh, reliable? And he says he buys them directly from the manufacturer and he says they're a good, good servo. Um, I mean, they're not the most expensive servos and his prices are quite reasonable as well. So I, th I decided to get 10 <laughs> and I think for 10 servos in the UK, which with packaging, I paid uh, just short of £70, which is probably about $100-ish. So for, for 10 servos, that's quite good. And I, unfortunately, I think I have got some of these MG90 servos in a couple of other models. So um, I will be replacing them as well. So the actual servo that failed and didn't work at all, I was so pissed off with it, basically, that uh, I've actually thrown it away now. But these have come out the F18. Uh, so what we'll do, we'll have a look at the fix so it will never happen again. <laughs> so we'll just move this out of the way. So the way to fix these servos, <laughs> if you can hit, so the way to fix these servos, They're quite strong actually, aren't they? Let's try them that way. <laughs> oh yeah, that's done it. Let's hit it hard. There we go. So I don't know where that bit's gone. <laughs> So I know, it, I know it's a bit catastrophic, guys, and I'm not a guy that likes destroying things. I'd, you know, you see some of these videos on YouTube where people go in and they wreck things. It's, it's, it's not something I enjoy doing, but these will never give me that problem again. So you can see the... That one's still... Let's give that one a bit more. That's it. That one's gone as well. So we'll never have that problem again. Uh, so there's no way I can use them again. So guys, my recommendations would be never buy servos from Banggood, eBay, Amazon, unless you can be 100% certain they're genuine servos um, or any Chinese reseller. Um, from researching on the internet, uh, eBay is probably the worst place to buy servos from. You know, you, I mean, you might have had not had any problems with them, but there's always a chance you're going to have that problems. And when you have a catastrophic failure, like I did on my uh, F18, you know, it, it's, it dents your confidence a little bit. And it means you've got a lot of work then to repair it. And I know some guys are not, um, some of the guys at our flying field, they just like to fly. They're not really into repairing. So if they had that problem on a, uh, a model they'd put servos in, they'd probably just end up binning the model and uh, you know so so my recommendation is just only buy from reputable resellers and where you can ch check out are they genuine and where they actually get them from and uh, and hopefully you know you won't have this problem uh, in the future I know for certain I won't I'll never buy servos from anywhere else but um, a you know, reputable reseller where we can trace that they're genuine so thanks for watching, guys. Um, this wasn't a video I intended to make, but I thought if I can sort of warn you guys of potential problems, and I'm sure you've heard of problems from cheap Chinese servos, and you know, you hear a lot of guys, they buy 
a batch of 10 and only eight of them work, you know. Um, so that will never happen to me again. I will never buy any servos from the Chinese resellers, eBay or Amazon. You know, they'll always come from a reputable dealer. So catch you in the next video. And hopefully the next video is going to be on using Fusion 360 on the foam cutter. Uh, that was supposed to be the next one, but I thought this might be useful, you know, and perhaps help you avoid the same situation I got into. So catch you in the next one, guys.